Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm teaching you 13 different false counts with cards. So basically what a false count is, is having a packet of cards and counting them, but you're doing something sneaky. You're either hiding a card or multiple cards, or you're either counting more than there are or less than there are. Or you can do a combination of everything, or you can show all the cards as the same, even though they're all different. There's a lot you can do with these false counts. So I'm not going to be teaching you any tricks today with these false counts because there's literally thousands of things you can do with them. This video is going to be sort of a reference uh, for future videos when I say do an Elmsley count or a Jordan count, you know what to do from this video and you can revert back to this and watch this when I say do one of these counts. So we're going to start at the top at the most basic and work our way down to the more difficult ones and uh, let's just stop talking and get right into it. So we're going to start things off with the most common of all false counts, it's called the Elmsley count, sometimes known as the ghost count by Alex Elmsley. So if you're reading like an old book and you come across uh, something called the ghost count, uh, it's really just an Elmsley count, uh, it's the same thing. So what it is, it's a packet of four cards and you just count them like this, you got one, two, three, four cards. Or so it should seem, I didn't really do it there, I just showed you how to count four cards as if you're doing the Elmsley count. Now what happens is the third from the top card down is going to be the one that's hidden, alright? So take a, maybe a red card and put a third from top so you can practice. Anytime you're doing a false count, you want to make it look as close uh, to the real thing as possible, alright? So what you're going to do for the false count is count off one card like this. You want to hold the packet in pinch grip with your thumb on top, fingers below at, at the side like this. Now what you're going to do is take your other hand and peel the top card off into your hand like this. Next, you push off a double card, just squeeze the packet kind of tighter, and then push off with your thumb and those two cards will align. See that red card is hidden there when you do that. So once again, peel that top card off, push over that double, squeezing, and then what you're gonna do is take the first card, put it under the packet like this, and then take both cards like this, as if it's a one card, and then count off normally, one, two. At the end of the count, the red card will be at the bottom of the packet, so you can just put it right back there and repeat your practice. So once again, top card, push over the double by squeezing, put it under, so you're here, and that, since you push it over, it's going to be very easy to just grab between uh, your index there and your thumb. Just grab it like this, and then count those off normally. A little tip to make this look more natural, instead of taking the cards in pinch grip and then counting them, uh, why not just count the first card first before you put it into your hands so you're like this, your index is on the corner, and take your thumb and apply a downward and diagonal pressure like this so the card goes like that while maintaining those squared cards there. So you're like this, and then you start the count, right? So instead of one, two, you're already in that position. So then just start the count, push over the double, take that card, count the cards. So at full speed is very casual, you just do this. This obviously works the same if you want to do it face up, hiding a card that you don't want to show. Uh, doing the Elmsley count, you have it in the third position down, and you just do the Elmsley count like this, hiding that card. Or if you want to hide a face up card in a face down packet, it's the same thing. Uh, everything is the same with the application. So now after you've mastered the Elmsley count, we can move on to the Jordan count by Charles Jordan. And here's what that looks like. So you just count four cards, like an Elmsley count, but uh, it's a little bit different. And here's what you do. So the card that you're hiding is on the bottom of the packet. So you start off like an Elmsley count uh, with that same pinch grip, uh, pushing one card over. Now here, instead of doing a double, you just push off a single like this. So it's single, single. Now what you do here is you put both cards under the packet and then push off a triple. So it's single, single, put them under and then push off a triple like this. So again, that single, single, put those under and push off the triple. So at the end of this, the card will be at the third position. And there's a lot of tricks you can do that combine the Elmsley count and the Jordan count. And a good way to get good at both of these is by first doing the Elmsley count like this. Just do your Elmsley like this. And then at the end of that, the card will be at position for the Jordan. So just do the Jordan count now like this and then do the Elmsley count right after. So you're just repeating the Elmsley and the Jordan over and over just to practice, right? So check this out. We have an Elmsley count and we have the Jordan count. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the Siva account, and the Siva account is created by a guy named Jack Avis, and Siva is just Avis spelled backwards. This sort of combines the Elms account and the Jordan account, so what you're going to do is have five cards, and the card that you're hiding is directly in the middle. And here's what it looks like. So again, it's just a four-card count in the Elms account position like this, so you have four cards like that. So the cool thing about the Siva account is that it not only hides the card, but it also doesn't hide any other cards. So you can show four aces as four aces while hiding in the card that you want to hide. So here's the action. Step one and two is just an Elms account, all right? So it's a single. In this case, it's the triple. All right, you squeeze and push over the triple. Put this card under, steal that triple there. Now here's where you start the second half of the Jordan count. You put all these under and then you just do a quadruple pushover. So just think of this Siva account as the first half of the Elmsley and then the second half of the Jordan count, all right? So it's uh, the single, triple and then put all these cards under and then just push over the block so you're really showing all four aces but hiding that one card so again single push over the block put the block under pushed over the block another approach to hide a card within a four of a kind but yet still show the four of a kind is the ej count which is the elmsley slash jennings count now this method is probably a little bit easier and more practical even but it really just depends on the trick that you're doing so uh, you have many options uh, when you're creating a trick right so uh, this count the card that you're hiding is in the fourth position so this is what it looks like you really show the four aces like this and that one card is hidden it's really that simple and what you do is you really count the four cards but one of them will be a double push off all right so it's single single and then a double push off and then the single so it's really easy really economical and uh that's the ej count so again single single double single so now let's move on to some biddle grip style counts and this one is called the frustration count by a brother john hammond what that is it's a way to show four cards of the same either on the face or on the back so what you do is you hold the cards in biddle grip like this and then you flash the bottom card and then you turn back down and then you, with your thumb you slide off that top card and at the same time you just turn back up like this to show the bottom card again and you keep doing that until all the cards are gone so it looks like at full speed that you have four aces of spades now this sometimes can be pretty obvious and uh, a good way to use the frustration count is not by showing four faces of the same but it's normally used to show four backs so here's that count again showing four aces but this time showing that all the cards have a blue back like this so you just do that frustration count showing that all the cards are blue but if i wave my hand over like this and snap you see that all the cards have turned uh, to red so i think you'd agree that doing the frustration count uh, showing backs is a lot more effective than showing them uh, with the faces right so here's how you do that trick i just did so i have one blue card on top of three red cards like the aces here right so one blue ace three red aces. Not to show that they all have a blue back, do the frustration count. So flash the bottom card, turn back over, take that with your thumb. Uh, again, flash the bottom card. Each time you're just taking the top card, flashing the bottom card. And now at the end, the blue card will be on the bottom, uh, which is perfect position for a Jordan count. So you can do anything you want. Do a magic gesture, wave your hand over, snap, turn the packet over, and then do your, uh, do your Jordan count. All right, so here we have another count by John Hammond called the Hammond count. It's a way to hide some, say, a few red cards when you're showing all blue cards in a biddle count uh, style. So let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue cards, and I've just hidden those three red cards. All right, so for teaching purposes, we have four blue cards and three red cards, and we're hiding, again, the red cards. So what's gonna happen is hold the uh, packet in middle grip and count off with your thumb like this, one, two, three cards. And when we get to the fourth one, this is a block of one card plus the three red cards. So what's essentially going to happen, you're going to switch packets uh, around. So you're just gonna count this packet again 
and then take this block of cards as if it's a single card, right? So a good way to do that is come over like this at an angle and just angle this block like this. That way it's easy to grab. So you're like this and you're just grabbing those lower cards like this and then taking that as if it's a single card and just counting these off normally like this. So again, we have one, two, three, and then you have the block, just switch the package around again. Remember, uh, come over like this at an angle, take these bottom cards and take this top block into the fork of your hand like this, as if it's a single card, and then continue the count. Now it will take a lot of practice to get this down smoothly. And so here's a few tips that Larry Jennings uh, suggests for this count. So instead of counting just straight across like this count, in an arc like this, so both hands are moving uh, away from each other like this in an arc. What I mean by that is as you're counting the cards, you want to form sort of a V shape with the cards like this as you're counting them. So both hands are moving away from each other in a circular motion like this. So when you come to your block that you want to switch, it's very easy and natural to do it because you're already in the sort of uh, circular shape, right? So that comes over gets angled and what you want to do is another tip by Larry Jennings is jam this packet as far as you can into the fork of your hand like this so it's easy to grab that immediately take it off in the circular motion continue counting so once you've mastered the frustration count and the Hammond count what comes next is the Havoc count by Phil Goldstein and that just combines the two. So let's say for instance, we have a joker, we have the four aces and we have a blank card. So we just have the four aces in the middle of a joker and a blank card. So what this count does is just hides the middle card. So you're gonna hide the aces and show three jokers and two blank cards. So here's the action. You just do the frustration count like this to show three jokers, that's one, two, three jokers, and then do the Hammond switch like this to show two blank cards, one, and then two. So you're showing five cards, three jokers, two blanks. So as we get as one, two, three jokers, and one, two blank cards. And the beauty of this is since uh, you show three jokers and two blanks, you can pause for a minute with the Hammond switch, go one, two, three. We also have uh, two blank cards, one, two blank cards. So the, the switch is sort of justified because you're showing two sets of cards. Now let's take a look at the Ulram subtlety by Ed Marlowe. Ulram is Marlowe spelled backwards. It's basically an empty count to the table, right? So let's say we have four cards, uh, all of which are blue except for this red card, which is second from the top. And this is what it looks like. So you're just showing the four aces while hiding that uh, the red card. So again, the hidden card is second from the top. So what you're gonna do is push over the top card like this and turn both hands over at once like this to show two blue backs like this. So again, push over that top card, turn both hands over, showing two blue backs. Now what you're gonna do is repeat that, only this time push over to the top card and put both cards onto the table. So the illusion is that uh, the card they just seen over here is being pushed onto the table. So again, it's like this, you show the top card and that card there, push both on the table, and then we're just repeat that. So push over the top card, turn both hands over, and throw them both on the table. So again, at full speed, it looks pretty good. You're showing four aces legitimately, but hiding that one red ace. So here's a slight modification on the old ring count, all right? So it just depends on the, on the trick that you're doing, and sometimes you'll end up with the card you're trying to hide on top rather than right there. So in this case, you can still do the old ram just with a slight variation. So what you're gonna do is push over the block of cards. So you have three cards pushed over uh, like this. So you push over the triple, and then take it like this, and then just do the regular old ram. Uh, like this, turn both hands over, push the top one over, put both down, and repeat that. So again, the card that you're hiding is on top, uh, three blue cards, one red card. Do a triple push over like this. You have three cards in your hand right now. Turn both hands over, do the old ram like this. So this next one, the AG display by Edward G. Brown, is a way to show three cards all alike, all right? So you, you have three cards, you can be any cards, um, but the card that you wanna show all the same is on top, and this is what it looks like. So uh, we have here a three of hearts, we have over here a, another three of hearts, we have over here a, another three of hearts. 
It's actually very simple. So here's what you do. You start out with it on top and you show a single like this and turn it back over. Now what you're gonna do is push off a double like this and just take it in your hand and put it on the bottom, all right? Next you do a double lift to show the other three of hearts. And then you take off a single like this and put it on the bottom and then turn over a single again to show three of the same card. This next one, the Swindle Count by Ed Marlowe, is a way to hide a card uh, with three cards. So let's say you have three queens and an ace on top and you want to hide the ace. All right, so here's what you do. You want to put uh, the queen that's different color in the middle. So you have two black queens and then a red queen in the middle and the card you want to hide on top, all right? So here's what it looks like. So you show a queen, uh, put it on the table, show another queen, put it on the table, uh, show another queen, put it on the table, show the last queen on the table. So here's the action. So you have your setup ready to go. And at first you do a triple lift, all right? So just push over a block of three cards like this. It's very easy because you're just pushing over that triple and then the single card just stays there. So you push over the triple by squeezing like this and then you show the queen. You turn that triple back over and put it on the table. Now you do a, just a single turnover to show the second queen like this, turn it back over and then put it on the table. Next, you uh, separate the hands and you turn the bottom card over using this card as a lever like this, showing that third queen. And then you just flash the last one like this and put it on the table. So this next one, the Rhythm Count by Lyra Jennings has a lot of applications, but I'll just teach you the most basic uh, form here. So what we have here is four cards. We have a Joker, we have another Joker here, and here, and a Joker here. So we have four Jokers, but the reality of it is that we only have uh, two Jokers and we have two Queens. All right, so the cards that you want to show all alike are on the bottom and then second from top, all right? So you have any card, a joker, any card, a joker. So you're gonna show four jokers. So here's the action. What you wanna do is sort of spread the cards and get a break under the top two cards like this because you're gonna do a double lift uh, here in a second. So what you do is most people do it like this. They just turn over double like this and then they do it. But the way it's taught in Larry Jennings' book is that you take the double like this by the corner and show the double like this which is a lot better in my opinion because it matches all the other actions that you do. Anyway, so you have your break under the two cards and you show the double like this, all right? So you show the double as a joker, right? And you put it back down and just thumb it off like this. Next, you thumb off another card like this. And then like the old ram subtlety, you turn over your hand like this to show another joker. So again, you have your double like this, show it, put it on top, thumb it down. Next, thumb over the next card and then show the bottom card next. Now what you do is you thumb off that card, turn over this card, throw it down, turn over that card. So you can see that's where the name rhythm count comes from because it has a nice rhythm to it, right? So again, you have your cards in place, a second from top and on the bottom, you have your jokers there, right? So you get your break under the top two cards, do a double like this, show a joker, put it back on top, thumb it down. Next, take the next card in your hand like this and show the bottom card. Now, two things happen at the same time. You turn this card over while thumbing that card down. And then what you do here is you uh, throw that down and then show the last card like that. And that's the ribbon count. One more time at full speed, four cards. We have over here a joker. We have another joker over here, a joker here, and a joker there. So this next one is called the Mirage Count by Larry West, and it accomplishes the same thing as the Rhythm Count, but it's more related to an Elsley Count in handling. So again, we're gonna show two Jokers as four Jokers. So the, both Jokers start on the bottom of the packet like this, and you're ready to go. So here's what it looks like. So I've got a packet of uh, four cards, and I've got a Joker there, I've got a Joker here, I've got a Joker there, and one more Joker right there. So here's the action. You want to spread over four cards. See, so look, I've got four cards and then square them up and then turn the whole packet over. See, so look, I've got a joker here and then turn the packet over and then do a triple pushover like this. Very easy because it's just a block of three cards. You just push over like this. So I've got a joker there. I've got a joker here and just turn this hand over to show that you have a joker, right? Now what's going to happen is an Elmsley count, all right? So again, like an Elmsley, just push the double over like this and put the single under, take the double there. And again, do that same action, turn your hand over to show the Joker, and then put the face card on top, and then turn your hand over again to show the last Joker there. So once again, turn the whole packet over, show a Joker, turn it back over, do a triple pushover like this, show another Joker there, and now just do the Elmsley count, push over a double, uh, put the single under, take the double, show again you have a Joker on the face, 
And I put the face card on top, show the last card a single joker, and then you have what seems to be four jokers. So now we have the Rumba Count by Jean-Pierre Ballerino, and it's a way to show four cards all alike. Alright, so I've got some cards here, and these cards are kind of funny because, well, they don't have any faces on them. And this is what cards look like before they come out of the printer, uh, just blank with no faces. And it's easy to get faces on them if you want to. Let's say we want oh, four queens. It's easy. All I got to do is think queen and snap your fingers, and all of a sudden you have you have your queens. All right, so here's the action on that. So the setup is uh, for the trick I did is to have the blank card on the bottom or a joker and then two black queens and a red queen. So you always want to have the off color on top followed by the two matching colors. So that's your setup and you're ready to go. So what you want to do is turn the packet face up. Say, look, I've got four blank cards or jokers or whatever you want to do, right? And then take the packet with the fingers above and thumb below. So the thumb is touching the back of the card at this point, all right? So you grasp the packet like this. And as you turn it over, there's a block pushover with your fingers uh, to over like this, right? So you're holding a single pretty much with your thumb and fingers like this. So again, hold the packet like this block push up with your fingers that way you're holding a single card like this now when the cards are face down what you want to do is just lever that packet back face up like this to show the face of the blank card again as you throw that down so it's the same action over and over just do that turning over motion like this do that push over and then you have the single card so you just lever that over like that put it on the table again do that and lever it over on the table then you show all four uh, blank cards. So once again, you turn the packet face up, do the block pushover with your fingers like this, throw it on the table, keep doing that block pushover and the turnover like that, showing what seems to be all four blank cards. Now the situation now is that you have the blank card on top with two queens in the middle and the red queen on top. So you're in perfect position to do a Jordan count, which is again, single single and then the pushover all right so thanks for watching this video and i really hope that you learned something new and if you're watching this channel and you like what i put out and you're not subscribed just do me a favor and hit the subscribe button it helps me out more than you think until next time happy practicing i love you guys